Hello. Welcome. Let us pray. Dear God. Please open our hearts to accept your truth. Protect us from the schemes of the devil. Who seeks to steal your word from our hearts before it can take root and bear fruit. Help us to be receptive to your teachings and to apply them to our lives. Strengthen us against the lies and distractions of the world. And give us the courage to follow you even when it is difficult. May your truth guide us in all that we do, and may it be evident in our thoughts, words, and actions. In Jesus' name, we pray, Amen. God hates hypocrites. I always play in my mind, again and again, the story of Ananias and Sapphira. As we read in Acts, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. God did not punish them because they kept some of the money. God punished them because they wanted to look holier than they were. They were hypocrites. They wanted to appear as generous Christians when in fact they were not. Are you living an authentic Christian life? Or are you also trying to fake it? In a world where everyone is struggling to put on a social media appearance. How can we live sincerely for God? Unfortunately, Christians have also been caught up in this trap. It is time to heed Jesus' warnings. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside. But on the inside are full of the bones of the dead and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside, you appear to people as righteous. But on the inside, you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. Matthew 23 27-28 The prophet Isaiah cried. The Lord says, These people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips. But their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules they have been taught. Isaiah 29 13 We have been called by God to be overcomers. Are you overcoming your flesh, the world, and Satan? Or are you covering up your sins to look good before men? One example in the Bible where someone tried to cover up their sins. Instead of overcoming them is the story of King David and Bathsheba. He thought he had successfully covered up his sin. He succeeded in the eyes of men. But failed in the eyes of God. What are you struggling with? If you allow the light of God's grace to shine on it, you will have the peace of mind that is eluding you. In our relationship with God, it is crucial that we strive for authenticity and sincerity. We must not settle for a shallow or superficial faith. But instead, constantly seek to grow closer to Him, and to love Him more deeply. Even when it is uncomfortable or difficult, we should pray for the Lord to reveal any areas where we are falling short. Or where there is insincerity in our hearts. In 1 Peter 4 17-18, he speaks of the need for judgment to begin with the household of God. We must strive to live in obedience to God's word. And to pursue righteousness in all that we do. In 2 Peter 1 10-11, Peter encourages us to not just barely make it into the kingdom of God, but to strive for a triumphant entry, one where we are welcomed and given a crown. This means living a life of true authenticity and sincerity, fully committed to Christ and his kingdom. As we seek to live in this way, we can trust that God will be faithful to help us grow and mature in our faith. In Romans 5:17, it is written that they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. As believers, we are called to reign in life, to overcome rather than just cover up. God does not settle for averages or false judgments. He will only say come, thou good and faithful servant. To those who are truly good and faithful, in 1 Corinthians 3:13, 13, 
it is written that every person's work will be tested by fire in the end. Therefore, it's important to pray for God to search our service, profession, and experience. So that we're not building with wood, hay, and stubble. We cannot speak casually about the cross of Christ, separation, and consecration. Without truly understanding and living out these concepts in our lives. Our words must be backed by genuine experience. And we must be prepared for God to answer our prayers. God is searching the hearts of his people. And developing the character necessary for us to reign with Christ. This process isn't instant, but requires daily hardships, attacks from the enemy, and misunderstandings. We must learn to reign with Christ in the midst of our current circumstances. If we can't get along with the people around us. Or reign over the difficult things in our lives. Then we're not truly reigning with Christ. We must learn to overcome the little things in this life. If we hope to reign with him on his throne. Remember, salvation through repentance and faith in the blood of Jesus puts us in the kingdom. But it doesn't automatically put a crown on our heads. Our reward comes according to our works. So let's strive for authenticity and sincerity in our relationship with God. Let's not settle for a shallow or superficial faith. But instead, constantly seek to grow closer to Him, and to love Him more deeply. Christ died to make us holy, and our love for Him should be strong and unwavering. So, let's take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. But he who unites himself with the Lord is one with him in spirit. This passage reminds us that those who are joined to the Lord are one spirit. This unity with Christ should permeate every aspect of our lives. And we should strive to make ourselves like Jesus in all things. Love is a key component of this transformation. And it should be a love that is both stern and searching. The passage reminds us that Christ's love for us should be at the forefront of our minds. The Holy Spirit leads us back to the sacrifice of Christ on Calvary. And we should be moved by his love for us. Which should in turn compel us to sacrifice everything for him. We should strive to live lives of holiness and selfless devotion to him and allow his love to transform us into his likeness. Ultimately, we are called to make a decision about whether we are willing to lay down our lives for the sake of Christ and his love. Are we willing to give up everything for him? We should strive to make ourselves like Jesus in all things and let his love fill every aspect of our lives. How can we be overcomers in Christ? Being an overcomer in Christ means that we have the power and victory over sin, and the temptations of the world through our faith in him. The Apostle John says in 1 John 4 4, You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them. Because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15:57. It is Christ who gives us victory over the flesh, the world, and Satan. We cannot win in our own strength and wisdom. Through the power of Christ in us, we can overcome any obstacle, temptation, or trial that comes our way. By putting our faith in him and relying on his strength, we can be victorious over sin and live a life that honors and glorifies God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you with humble hearts, recognizing our need for your grace and mercy. We ask for your strength and guidance to overcome the temptations of our flesh, the distractions of this world, and the schemes of Satan. Help us to resist the urge to cover up our sins and instead confess them to you and seek your forgiveness. We pray that you would transform our hearts and minds to be more like your son Jesus. And to live lives that are pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, we pray, 
Amen.